Now, PM10, PM25, we all see these figures for alarming pollution levels in your city. But do we really understand all these figures? Well, there may be an easier way to fathom just how polluted the air we breathe is and an app that will tell you what's the equivalent in terms of smoking, even or especially if you're not a smoker. You think only he is smoking and damaging his lungs? Not really. Those in India's top metros are smoking every day, not just one or two. A number of cigarettes every single day. How is it possible, you ask? Try this, the Shoot I Smoke app. It's a new pollution monitoring app that tracks the air quality around us. But wait, don't we have a lot of such apps already? True. But this one is a little different, and what makes it distinct is the way it works. The app shows the air quality data in a way that you would understand the best, in terms of the number of cigarettes smoked. It's very simple to use. Just enter the location and it shows the air you are breathing is as bad as smoking a given number of cigarettes. Yes, you heard it right, because perhaps that's the easiest way for people like you and me to understand how toxic the air is around us, and what we are inhaling every day. For instance, it shows that air quality in Delhi is equivalent to smoking over 7 cigarettes a day. And here is a look at how bad the air quality is in India's top cities. Mumbai, Noida, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Chennai, Kolkata, Jaipur, and not just Indian cities. You can check the air quality data of any city in the world. And now a vital question is, how does it work? Well, it's no rocket science. Step 1. The app identifies your phone's location. Step 2. Finds the nearest air quality station near you. Step 3. Connects it to the database that is from using real-time air pollution data from the World Air Quality Index project. Step 4. And it then translates the data into a number of cigarettes smoked. It sounds like a great idea to help people understand how toxic the air quality is around them. But here are a few questions. How accurate is the data? Are they using a standard method to collect data? Is the data accessed updated consistently? Is it fair to compare effects of cigarette smoke and air pollution? There could be inaccuracies in data and the results could be vague, but they definitely are not absolutely foggy. While you may not want to take the results at face value, it wouldn't be fair to completely dismiss them too. Bureau report, we on. Now, our reporters sent us the following inputs. Take a look. Well, we're currently standing at Makri Circle. Now, Makri Circle is one of the busier intersections of the city of Bengaluru. There are more vehicles moving through this intersection in comparison to many other junctions, many other roads of Bengaluru. So let's quickly take a look as to what is the impact it's really having on the air quality here. While the Central Business District has shown 0.3 or 0.4 cigarettes, uh, but this particular location is showing 1.6 cigarettes. It means that by just standing here, it means that I'm smoking 1.6 cigarettes. Certainly not good for my health and certainly not good for the health of citizens who are trapped in traffic here. We are near India Gate, which is considered the center of New Delhi. And I have an app in my phone which shows the exact air quality at the moment. And it shows right now that the air that we are breathing right now is equal to smoking around 7 cigarettes. It means that the air quality is very bad over here. Now, I'm standing in Mumbai's suburban area of Juhu. Now, I exactly punch in the address where I'm standing. That is Juhu Tara Road. And here we go. The application says that we are indeed going to be smoking close to 4.1 cigarettes today being in this location. Well, I'm in London, it is overcast, uh, but I picked a greenish area, so I'm hoping for a good result. And I've just downloaded the app that is supposed to tell you um, how much, essentially, cigarettes you're smoking based on the air pollution. And I'm opening it up, that, and it's worse than I thought. Um, 3.7 cigarettes per day. Now, that is quite surprising. Um, especially for myself as a non-smoker, to be inhaling essentially four cigarettes a day. Uh, but I guess that's the point of the app, to make people aware of just how much air pollution that surrounds them. So it seems quite bad here. Mandy Clark, we on London. 
I am at Central Road in Dhaka, and the reading on my Should I Smoke Collision app is 2.4. Now, these trucks that you see on your screens have a message. They have a message born out of desperation. Now, these are truckers in Brazil. Remember, Brazil, both Brazil and India are part of BRICS, a grouping of major emerging economies. Now, two economies expected to grow together, also two economies with similar challenges. Now, the past one week, no different. Now, the story goes like this. Diesel prices in Brazil soared. People were hit hard. Truckers had a difficult time making ends meet. So they decided to go on a strike. They applied brakes on their vehicles. Everything stalled. A fuel shortage ensued. Government called the military to ensure supply of essential items. But as we said earlier, grit and determination paid off in a week's time. Now the president of Brazil, Michel Temer, has cut diesel prices by 12%. And he has agreed to make sacrifices in the budget. In outros trechos... The first request of truckers, the price of diesel was reduced to 0.46 cent per liter. For 60 days, the price will not change, and after that, it means two months from now, the adjustment will be every month. The government is assuming sacrifice in the budget and will cut the differences without affecting Petrobras. Now, life can be tragic. Tragedies, uh, now fuel prices continue to touch new high for the 16th consecutive day, with petrol price reaching as high as 78 rupees and 43 pesa per liter in India's capital of New Delhi. Now, the price of diesel per liter has also been increased to 69.31 pesa rupees in Delhi. In Mumbai, the price of petrol reached 86.24 rupees, while the diesel prices in the city went up to 73.79 rupees. However, there are other cities in India, such as Itanagar, Azol, Port Blair, Agartala and Panjim, which are selling cheaper petrol. The other places selling costly petrol include Hyderabad, Jalandhar, Patna, Bhopal and Mumbai. Now, the surge in petrol prices is largely attributed to the recent rise in crude oil cost and the high excise duty levied on the particular fuel type in the country. However, the price of international Brent crude oil has declined around $3 per barrel in the last two days, which triggered the hopes of easing fuel prices in the country. Now, Brent crude is currently priced around $76 per barrel. Now, life can be tragic, tragedies can be tolerated, but mysterious tragedies can be suffocating, and that's exactly what is happening to the relatives of the passengers of MH370, the flight that vanished en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing more than four years ago. The tragedy happened on March the 8th, 2014. Massive hunts were launched. The last one ended today. U.S.-based Ocean Infinity used deep-sea vessels to survey a vast area in the southern Indian Ocean. No results. What's more, the Malaysian government says it has no plans to begin a new search effort. In any case, official search efforts came to an end last year with no conclusion in sight. No one knows what happened to the fateful flight. So what next? Malaysian Transport Minister says full report will be published soon. Anthony Loke has not given a date, though. Australia says the search had tested the limits of technology and experts and people at sea. Australia, Malaysia and China say the search will resume only if there was credible evidence identifying a specific location of the missing aircraft. Unfortunately, the only confirmed traces of the plane have been three-wing fragments found washed up on Indian Ocean coasts. Here's a quick timeline of what happened to MH370. March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 loses contact less than one hour into the flight. March 15, 2015, investigations now focus on Indian Ocean. July 2015, debris is found on Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. January 2017, Australia, Malaysia, China suspend official search. January 2018, Ocean Infinity launches search operation. May 2018, Ocean Infinity's operation 
ends. Malaysia says no plan to resume search. All right, in news just coming in, India Park senior military officers speak on recent ceasefire violations. They agree to maintain restraint. Right, so that's the news uh, we are tracking here on uh, Weon this moment. Indian and Pakistani military officers speak on recent ceasefire violations. They agree to maintain restraint. Right, so we'll stay on this story for the moment. This is news breaking here on Beyond This Moment. The military officers from India and Pakistan speak. The Directors General of Military Operations have spoken to each other and they have agreed to maintain restraint on either side of the international border and the line of control. All right, so we'll uh, get all the latest from Weon Sidan Sibyl in a bit, but uh, this is the news we are tracking here on Weon this moment. Senior military officers from India and Pakistan speak on the recent ceasefire violations. Both sides agree to maintain restraint. All right, joining me on the phone line from New Delhi is my colleague Sidan Sibyl. Sidan. Give us more details on this uh, talks between the officers uh, from the both Indian and Pakistani militaries. Well, there was this uh, uh, talk which happened. A special hotline contact has been established between Pakistan and India. A DG uh, of the military offices, uh, the DG uh, of the military offices reviewed the prevailing situation on the line of control and also agreed to further implement the ceasefire understanding of uh, 2003 in letter and spirit. Uh, given the fact the situation in uh, the uh, the line of control hasn't been very good, uh, it's a big development. It shows uh, uh, the increase. Uh, uh, at least uh, uh, both the sides are. Agreeing to talk to each other. Uh, we saw yesterday that press conference by uh, the external affairs minister who said uh, that uh, till uh, uh, talks, uh, uh, till the terror is not stopped from the Pakistan side, talks, ca talks cannot happen. But we also saw that the, uh, the, uh, the Coast Guard had a meeting yesterday and agreed on several issues, including uh, cleaning of the oil spills, which of course is, might be a minor development, but it shows at least India and Pakistan are talking. But now this development has happened. The DGMOs have agreed that the ceasefire, uh, which was agreed in the 2003, uh, should be, uh, 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 through letter and spirit, should be agreed upon. And uh, 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 the prevailing situation at least warrants that because situation hasn't been very good at the ceasefire, uh, at, the, at the line of control in uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Right, so Siddhant was pointing out the military officers from both India and Pakistan have uh, spoken to each other and they've agreed to maintain restraint and that they've uh, tried to take measures to restore calm on the, the uh, line of actual control and the international border. Right, moving on, the active shooter video game comes amid the gun control debate in the United States. Protests for stricter gun laws continue, and so do the deadly shootings. To every politician who is taking donations from the NRA, shame on you. This is the rage against corruption and complacency in the debate over gun control in the United States. In February this year, the U.S. witnessed one of the deadliest school shootings. Seventeen were killed while several were left wounded in Florida's Parkland High School shooting that stirred nationwide outrage across the United States. The February 14th incident led to several demonstrations in the country with the call for stricter gun laws. A month after the carnage, 17-minute classroom workouts were organized in a tribute to the 17 killed.
the call for stricter gun laws grew louder. The US witnessed around 800 rallies named the March for Our Lives all across the globe. The protests even happened outside National Rifles Association of the US and the White House. We will not be treated like a statistic in this country. My school, Pulse, every other mass shooting will no longer be a statistic because we're going to put an end to those statistics and we will never stop fighting. This year, the death toll in US school shootings has only risen with at least 39 lives lost in such deadly incidents. Despite the public outrage, the demand for gun control has only fallen on deaf ears. And inaction has somehow led to some more shootings. This month, it was Santa Fe in Texas that saw 10 people being killed in a shooting at a high school. The president has shown no signs of taking any measures on the matter. Rather, he has only come under fire, more recently for his apparent mocking of the terror attack. Nobody, Nobody has, has guns, guns in Paris. Paris. Nobody. And we, and we all, all remember, remember more than 130 people, people plus, plus tremendous, tremendous numbers, numbers of people, people that were horribly, horribly wounded. You notice nobody ever talks about them. They were brutally killed by a small group of terrorists that had guns. They took their time and gunned them down one by one. Boom! Come over here. Boom! Come over here. Boom! And now, a video game based on school shooting has come under the scanner, which only comes as a simulated training on school shootings. The question remains, will there be a breakthrough in this uphill battle of gun control in the United States? Bureau Report, Vion. Thank you.